Last week, the second highest number of migrants from sub-Saharan Africa sought to come to Europe and sank in the Mediterranean, 5,600. Most of them were rescued. In the course of the last year, two and a half million migrants have crossed the Mediterranean looking for a fair life and a decent prospect. We all know about the Syria crisis and we understand the political dilemmas and the war-related dilemmas that are driving that. But the world doesn't have its eyes sufficiently on the destitute and the poor who are coming from sub-Saharan Africa prepared to face the risk of their lives to get across the Mediterranean for some basic things that you and I take for granted. Flick a switch and the light comes on. Turn a tap and there is water. Actually go to a place you can buy food and there is food in abundance. Send a child to school, they get educated. Simple, basic, daily realities we don't notice and they don't have. I'm a passionate believer in the responsibility of the empowered and the privileged to focus on the prosperity of the poor. Launched a year ago at the United Nations, 198 countries agreed together that by 2030, we better meet these targets. These are the pressing demands of world responsibility. For the first time in living history, the entire corporate reality, from the UN to the NGOs to the business world, agrees that it's about time we had dignity for the poor. It's about time we had fairness and justice for those who are on the edge of the margins of basic survival when you and I take so much for granted. So this is yesterday's FT. Global debt at a record $152 trillion and rising. $152 trillion is just over twice the size of global GDP. That's every country of the world put together. 220 countries put their collective GDP together and double it. You're at the debt level. Do you know where? Two-thirds, says the World Bank, of the world's debt is held not by governments or corporations, but by you. It's private debt. In order to meet these sustainable development goals, I mean, they look like crazy ambitions. No poverty, zero hunger, quality education, reducing it. Is that madness? In order to meet that, the IMF says that the world is going to need to pay $2.8 trillion a year more than all the aid and charity we currently have. $42 trillion, $42 trillion over 14 years. And we say it's unaffordable. Just a week ago, on behalf of KPMG, I spoke to the world's sovereign wealth funds, all 54. They were all in London. We had a conference with them at the O2. Those sovereign wealth funds, the largest being Norway, it's all as a result of oil and gas, those sovereign wealth funds have a collective aggregate resource together of $40 trillion available. It's 54 countries. That's roughly the size of what is needed to meet the world's destitution. You see, people say it's unaffordable. It's not true. We can do this. And we can do this at small scale and big scale. We chose to do something entrepreneurial. Seven years ago, we chose to take a tiny community of 10,000 people in a village in Tanzania on an island called Pemba, just above Zanzibar, that had been forgotten by both the governments of Tanzania and the world economy. 10,000 people had no sanitation. I'm not exaggerating. I've been there every year for the last seven years. No sanitation, no clean water, no toilets, no electricity, no jobs, no schools, no maternal care. No provision for mothers giving birth to children. No prospects, no economy. The first thing we did, electrify it. 28 KPMG countries invested in a fund. We built in an infrastructure to put electricity in. That was the beginning of creating a healthcare system. We built a clinic so mothers could give birth to children in safety and not a single child has died since we've been involved actively. 
We made sure that we provided education for the girls. And then we identified the one thing nobody had spotted before, which is seaweed was clogging up the little fishing boats. So we've turned that into a four and a half million dollar business, created 4,000 jobs in a community of 10,000, and set them free. We finished the job in July. If a bunch of auditors can spot the seaweed and turn it into business, that's entrepreneurship. Every one of us has the power to meet a goal. So when you leave here today, choose the goal you're going to meet, meet it with passion and commitment, and stop saying it's unaffordable.